All right, guys, so this is the second video uh, for the quizzes for leukemia. And again, we're just trying to make sure that you have a, a good grasp of the concepts behind the, the leukemia information. So it's just three extra questions to kind of test your knowledge. So hope you like the video. All right, guys, so this question reads, a 39-year-old female presents for follow-up to her primary care for fever, fatigue, shortness of breath, her blood work uncovered that her white blood cells have a strong affinity for vitamin A derivatives. Which of the following is most associated with the patient's condition? Okay, so answer choice A, is it found in myeloid cells, grows quickly? B, found in lymphoid cells, grows quickly? C, found in myeloid cells, grows slowly? Or D, found in lymphoid cells, grows slowly? So again, uh, you know, first of all, you, we gotta make the diagnosis, right? And what's, what's the clue that we have here? Well, we always look at age, okay? Fever, shortness of breath, that's, that's pretty vague, okay? There's not too much there, but this, this sentence right here, they gotta give you something that leads you in some type of direction. She has a strong affinity for vitamin A derivatives. And so which one did we say, you know, is associated with, um, with vitamin A? And so from that, obviously you should know, well, just to review, if we had CD34 here, we said it goes down, it can make a myeloid, right? Myeloid or lymphoid. And then we have the blast and those mature, the blast and those mature. So the vitamin A that we talked about, was that something, what, what was the mechanism behind that? Just before we get answering this, it's to do what? It's to mature the cell, right? There's a, there's a faulty, you know, it's a faulty translocation of 15, 17. The gene for the retinoic acid receptor is, is transferred from 15 to 17. And so the cell gets stuck. And so given the vitamin A helps it mature and get to where it should be. So the fact is this person has fever, fatigue, shortness of breath, they're not getting uh, the proper cells that they should, even though they don't give us a CBC or anything on this. So this person has obviously what? Number one, it's gonna be myeloid, right? It's on the myeloid side. So right there, we know it's gonna be myeloid. And we learned that last time. But then the question becomes is, does it grow quickly or grow slowly? And again, did we, we didn't cover that uh, when, during the first lecture or first questions with this. And this is just one of those things where you use questions that you come across and, and, you just, and that's where you get the information from. So what would you say though? You know, if you were, you know, my rationale thinking of this is, you know, where would, is this gonna go quicker here or quicker here? You know, cause what's the end game? The end game is gonna get, uh, obviously perhaps trying to get to this point. Um, but would the, would, you know, would it be the chronic version that grows quicker? per se, or would it be the acute if you didn't know, okay? Well, I would always think that, you know, at this stage, things are gonna kinda go, go process a lot quicker to get to that one. So that just kinda supports it. Would the age alone help us in this, right? Because what are we thinking here? Well, we know it's myeloid. The question is, is it acute myeloid leukemia or is it chronic myeloid uh, leukemia? And you probably already have it memorized that the vitamin A uh, is with the acute. So you could answer it just like that. And we, and we know that. So it's found in myeloid. But then is the acute fast or is the chronic fast? In this situation, it grows quickly. The answer choice is going to be A. You know, maybe that's something new. Um, but anyways, uh, you can at least narrow it down to the right myeloid. And then it's just a learning process to know that, that it actually goes quicker when you're in the acute versus if you were in the uh, chronic. Okay. All right. This one says, a 27-year-old presents to his primary care provider with persistent fever, uh, weight loss, nosebleeds. A peripheral blood smear reveals the following. And you can kind of see that, hopefully. Um, at least you can see what the arrow is pointing to, right? The arrow points to a structure that would most likely stain for which of the following. Is it terminal deoxynucleotidal title transferase, cytoplasmic? Is it, is it the TDT? Nucleus, myeloperoxidase cytoplasmic, or myeloperoxidase in the nucleus. Wow. So, you know, first of all, what is this thing right here? That is, if you ever get that on exam, you just better smile because you know it's an hour rod, right? Hour rods are associated with A, 
AML, okay? And this is where you had to uh, memorize that the, for AML, it is what, what kind of uh, staining was, was for this. This is gonna be myeloperoxidase, okay? And remember the other one, what was the other one? The other one's this TDT positive. Remember we said TDT um, is, de is to determine whether something is a lymphoblast, right? Whether something's an immature lymphoblast would stain TDT positive. And we saw that with ALL, right? Positive TDT. And then you had to determine whether it was a pre-B or a pre-T, you know, with the, with the markers on the outside. Um, just to, and just to review on that, the pre-B, CD19, CD10, the pre-T would have been CD1, 2, and 5. Now, so we know this is myeloperoxidase. Now think about this. Where do you think, and this is an easy way to remember it, do you think it's going to be cytoplasmic or nucleus? And just say you didn't know, okay? Cytoplasmic or nucleus? Where is the hour rod, per se? Hour rod, you're going to think it's outside. It's, you think more it's in, you know, in this trick, you can memorize it like that. The hour rod's going to be in the cytoplasm. So for AML, this myeloperoxidase stain is going to be cytoplasmic. So the answer choice is going to be C, okay? So that's one way you can memorize it. AML, there has an hour rod. Hour rod's out here. It's going to be cytoplasmic myeloperoxidase. And then uh, the last one here says, 67-year-old patient is diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. The tumor cells demonstrate a stain that is known to respond well to the medication rituximab. Which of the following is most associated with this medication's mechanism of action and associated feature? Okay? So basically the question is, do you know what rituximab does? Well, you better know, number one, that rituximab is associated with what? CD20. So let's see if there's some association with this. Is it A, targets the CD20 antigen on malignant B cells? Is it B, targets the CD20 antigen antibody complex on malignant T cells? Is it C, inhibits DNA synthesis by interfering with the ribonucleotide reductase and DNA polymerase? Or is it D, stimulates bone marrow production to produce granulocytes and stem cells? You know, at some point you've probably heard you know, some of these answer choices somewhere, and so they sound familiar to you. But for step one, you gotta know this stuff kinda cold. This rituximab, that came up on, I remember it like it was yesterday, it actually came up on my step one and step three exam. It was really kinda simple when you knew it was a CD20. However, you know, we're gonna take it one step further just in case they up their game. Uh, targets the CD20 antigen on malignant B cells. Where is this, you know, First of all, it's CLL, right? Makes sense. CLL, 67. Is it a B cell or T cell? Um, you know, is, is the issue with, a, with the B cell leukemia or is it a T cell leukemia? And we know, we talked about this, that it is, ac it is actually a B cell, not a T cell, and it's not this antibody complex either. So we know it's not B because it's not a, not, it doesn't go for T cells, it goes for B cells. So this one's a possibility. Is it inhibits DNA synthesis by interfering with the ribonucleotide reductase and DNA polymerase? No, we know it's gonna be CD20, but who is this guy? Who do you think this guy is? This is another one that's for CLL that you kind of combine with rituximab sometimes, and the mechanism does do this. It's actually called fludarabine, okay? I know, you're thinking, you know, where did that come from? You know, it's just uh, part of the process when you start going through these, you'll, you'll they'll start be, start to become, um, you know, more familiar with it. You treat with flu, uh, fludarabine with rituximab. Uh, typically, it's a, it's a combination that you can use in someone with CLL uh, if they have a CD20 uh, antigen on there. Uh, so this is fludarabine, so we know it's not that one. And then the D says stimulates bone marrow production to produce granulocytes and stem cells. What is that actually? That sounds like granulocyte colony uh, stimulating factor, okay? Not rituximab. So definitely not D. Answer choice is going to be A. Okay? So again, these are just some questions. Uh, kind of, you know, it's just extra questions that you can do to make sure you understand leukemia. But if you know everything, it's based on, it's typically based on age. Um, and again, you know, you got to know, you got to memorize a couple things. They got to give you some clue that puts you 
in this direction. And then the more questions that, that you do, you'll come across some information that adds a little bit more to it. Okay, so hope this was helpful. Thank mm -hmm. you.